My favorite way of learning and practice cinematography is to simply watch movies, TV shows, and understand what sequences do I like, what I don't like about it, and then try and recreate the same lighting, the same camera movements, the same scenarios, the same scenes within my own sequences for YouTube videos or simply for client productions. It's important to remember that if you try and push yourself to understand how did they light a specific scene or simply how did they shot this, what frame rate, what you know, what camera did they use, what camera movement they use, why they shot from this position instead of from that side, for example. It's very important to understand that all of these things are already shot in the right way. So for today's example, I wanted to use this sequence that I shot for a client about a month ago and we got the most insane condition. So let me explain the scene. Pretty much uh, is a hotel client and what they wanted is take some of their staff members and highlighting them because they've been with them since they opened. So the reason you clicked on this video is because of the title, which is how do I reach the Hollywood look? And yeah, that might be a bit of a clickbait. So I'm sorry if you're here because of the clickbait, but it worked. But with that said, the way I reach cinematic colors and look in post-production with DaVinci Resolve, it's very specific. And lately I actually changed my workflow a little bit. So I'm always chasing this very filmic, grainy, halation, very film looking image, but shooting digital and especially shooting with smaller camera. Like I shot this one sequence with my Sony A7S III as I didn't have access to any other camera for this specific shoot. It was um, challenging and um, I decided to shoot on very specific lenses and I mixed very specific lenses. I shot most of it on a 45 millimeter IRX at T1.5 and then I did a few close-ups with the Helios at 58 millimeter, which is the Helios 44.2 and I did a few wides with the Nisi 35 millimeter that I'm shooting this video with. I said I've been doing something different lately and this is the, the whole source of the video. I've been using Filmbox. Filmbox is an incredible tool from Video Village that I recently had the opportunity to test out for myself. And literally once I tested this on some of the footage that I shot, I cannot go away from it. They only have four film looks compared to their competitors, but the way this plugin works, it's just mind blowing. And the look that you can get out of it, it's even more mind-blowing. So let's not waste any time, let's go straight into DaVinci Resolve and edit a few of these sequences together. There is a few ways you can use Filmbox, and for this specific example, we can use one node to color grade the whole image and make it look like Hollywood film with one node. Super easy, super intuitive. But the way I usually use it, it's actually a supplement, and I use it at the end of my node tree so I have a bunch of nodes before Filmbox where I transform my footage to DaVinci White Gamut and from DaVinci White Gamut I just do adjustment like a little primaries, little colors, little mask and then at the end I take DaVinci White Gamut, put it into Filmbox, put the film look, add grain, halation, the look and I export to Rack 709. This is usually what I use but this specific example I want to show you guys how powerful this tool is by only using one node which is Filmbox. So let's get right into it. So as you can see here, we have three different shots. The first one, it is a bit of a wide on a 35 millimeter. The second one, it's shot on an Helios. And the last one is shot on a 45 millimeter. And we're just gonna use this little bit here. So as you can see, three different lenses. Let's just see what we can do with the film box. So let's just search for it, film box. Here we go, drag and drop it. On the right hand side, onto your inspector, you'll see a bunch of different things. Also, I just noticed my battery, it's pretty low, so hopefully my laptop does not turn off. So, we are gonna go down from the top. And let me open all the tabs just to show you guys. All right, so, right now we are in full mode, which means this is what you wanna have. You can also select negative or print only, but usually full is what I work with. And here you can choose your inputs. So. We shoot on Sony S-Log, so we're gonna put Sony S-Log 3 as Gamma 3 Cena. So out of the box, boom, boom. Then we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna make sure that the style is standard, the version, that's the version, 
and we're going to export in rec 709 gamma 2.4 because that is what we're working with now the first it's the camera if we enable it you can play around with your exposure your temperature and your tint and this is pretty insane because if you just for this shot put down the exposure put up the temperature adjust the tint look before camera after camera pretty insane already right so after this we're going to go to the negative and here you can select between 16 35 or 35 full frame i usually like the full frame look a bit more but you can play around with all of them the 35 millimeter has more presets um kind of that you can select from and the 16 millimeter also the 35 millimeter full frame doesn't but if you go down here to color and tone that you can select between the four film stock they have which is 200t 250 500t and 50d which are four of the most used stocks out there so i usually use 500t or 250d i think for this one 500t looks amazing the gamut compression usually i just leave it off i don't use it as i don't think it does much to be honest so we're just going to move on to the halation here full frame 35 millimeter we're going to zoom in a little bit to check what it works you can see it right here so if we remove it and then we add it it is a very nice halation to be honest and usually i don't really touch much here because it just looks amazing out of the batch but you can uh, you know play around with it and um, personalize it you can even adjust the color if you want to less saturated or more saturated but usually as i said the way it comes out it really matches the scene usually so i really really like what this looks like same for the grain as you can see here if we turn off the grain and on again you can see it right here a bit better so the only thing i do here usually it's uh, just remove the saturation i'm not a fan of saturation grain like gamma grain i don't think it looks that nice at least for my preferences so i just usually remove that and uh, leave it on uh, 35 millimeter and it looks incredible moving on down below we got dust i never use dust or gate weave but you have the option to do so then under the lab you could enable it and adjust the vibrance contrast and push and pull process of the film usually all of this little settings i never use them because this is just so good literally as soon as you apply you adjust the top which is exposure temperature and tint and you're done and as you can see you don't have much control over specifics like highlights or shadows so i usually just add primaries before and i touch that up there once you're all done with everything you can even export a lot in 33 or 65 x which are the most common lot formats so let's have a look this is before this is after with one click let's command c command v command c command v all right as i said before i showed in two different lenses so this image it is a bit different it is a bit more like the tint is a bit off and everything so usually again i would touch this up in primaries but let's do it here just for the sake of it just to show you guys how easy it is to achieve a very similar look and match the camera so i'm pretty happy with it if we zoom in here her skin tone looks pretty similar to what it looks like here obviously the helios have a lot of a softer softer look so maybe a little bit less temperature but i'm pretty happy with this already and uh, again maybe a bit more moody yeah that's it a bit less here we go now we copy this and we paste it here and this was shot again on a different lens which means we have to again adjust the exposure and everything but uh, it's pretty it's pretty accurate it's pretty accurate and this tool it's alongside a couple of more plugins some of the best i've used and it's definitely in the top two it's very hard to compare it to another plugin that i'm not going to mention but i use on a daily basis it's very hard to compare it because one has a bunch of film stock but this is very very accurate I feel like this is almost a better look compared to the other one and it's way easier to use and that's all guys if you do want to check out filmbox there is a link down below on top of the description this was not a sponsored video but 
I just really enjoy this plugin and I've been using it so much, especially for personal projects. There is a watermark free version that you can try, it's like a light version that you can use for your personal projects. So go check it out in the link down in the description. It doesn't cost anything, you can just test it out and then if you like it, you can then upgrade the plugin. So again, thanks for sticking around guys and I'll see you in the next one.